In this video, I want to explain toxin binders, what they are, what they do, and how to use them correctly. With so many different options out there, it's easy to get confused about which binder is best for which toxin. So I'll break down the most popular ones, such as zeolite, modified citrus pectin, chitosan, activated charcoal, and chlorella. And then we will talk about what toxins they bind, when to take them, and what to watch out for. Let's get into it. But before we go through each of the different binders, let's quickly recap what they're good for. Basically, binders support phase three detoxification. As you know, phase three detoxification happens when the toxin has already been mobilized and then conjugated in the liver and now needs to be eliminated through your stool or your urine. It's the final step in toxin processing. And when it doesn't work right, the toxins are left to recirculate between your gut bloodstream and liver again. So binders can support this process by well binding the toxin and facilitating its removal. Most of them work in the gut, but some can also be absorbed into the body. I will get to that later. We will now look at each of them in more detail, starting with zeolite. Zeolite is a crystalline volcanic mineral with a honeycomb like structure that acts like a natural sieve for toxins. It's especially good at trapping toxins that carry a positive charge. So it primarily binds to heavy metals like lead, mercury, cadmium, and arsenic. In addition to metals, zeolite can also bind ammonium, histamine, certain mycotoxins, so toxins from mold, and some pesticide residue. In terms of how to take it correctly, zeolite should always be taken on an empty stomach to maximize its ability to bind these harmful toxins without messing with your nutrient absorption. Ideally, you take it 30 minutes before meals or at least two hours after eating. Drinking a large glass of water with it is also important because zeolite needs enough fluid to move through your system. Also, you will want to avoid taking it if you're dealing with constipation or really slow digestion, since it can make things worse and add to that constipation. The normal dosage ranges from one to five grams per day, and this is often divided into two doses, so morning and evening, for example. As for quality tips, look for a zeolite that has been medical grade purified to remove any unnatural contaminants, like heavy metals that it might already contain. And good manufacturers will provide certificates of analysis that show the purity and particle size. Next, we have modified citrus pectin, which is also known as MCP. It's derived from the white part of citrus peels and enzymatically processed to be more easily absorbed through your intestine. MCP is a very selective binder, meaning it targets heavy metals like lead, mercury, and arsenic without excessively binding to essential minerals that your body needs. This is often a problem with many other binders that they not only bind to toxic metals, but also to essential nutrients. There seem to be cases where MCP binds to calcium though, so keep that in mind when using it. It also captures radioactive elements like uranium, cesium, and certain biotoxins associated with chronic infections or chronic mold exposure. I should also mention that unlike regular pectin, modified citrus pectin can act outside the gut due to its small particle size, because then it is somewhat absorbed into your bloodstream. This is very interesting because it is known to bind to galactin-3, which is a protein that is involved in fibrosis, inflammation, and even tumor growth. As for how to take it, it's very similar to zeolite, so you want to take MCP on an empty stomach about 30 minutes before meals or two to three hours after eating. Dividing the daily dose into two to three portions across the day can make things easier, especially if you take it during an active detox phase where a lot of toxins are mobilized. In terms of when to not take it, there is no strict contraindication, but because of its fiber content, MCP can sometimes cause bloating in sensitive people. Also, if you're on medication, you should keep a gap of at least one to two hours between the MCP and your pills just to avoid the reduced absorption. Normal doses here range from 5 to 15 grams per day, again in up to three portions. 
for heavy detoxification protocols, most people start lower and then build up to higher doses over time. And for quality tips, please know that MCP can be very expensive and good products can cost over $100. Pectosol seems to be a pretty reliable trademark, so I would probably go with that. Third, we have Kaidosan. This is a fiberlized substance that is extracted from the exoskeleton of sea animals like crabs or shrimp. It acts mainly on fat-soluble toxins, making it a good binder for substances such as persistent organic pollutants, POPs, dioxins, fat-soluble pesticides, and cholesterol. It can also bind small amounts of mercury and some other heavy metals that are attached to the fatty tissue. Kaidosin also has the ability to bind dietary fat, which makes it somewhat unique among the binders, so keep that in mind. As for how to take it, this kind of depends what you want to use it for. Most people take chitosan for weight loss purposes because it binds the fat in the gut. In such a case, you need to take it shortly before meals. But if you want to take it for detoxification, you want to take it longer before your meals to avoid the nutrient binding effect. So again, about 30 minutes before and two to three hours after. Also, it's important to drink enough water because chitosan swells up and can add to the constipation if you already have it, just like zeolite. As for when not to take it, people with shellfish allergies should be very careful here and probably avoid it. It's also not ideal for long-term use without breaks because even if you take it away from meals, it could somewhat decrease the absorption of fat-soluble vitamins if you use it every day. Usual dosing is around one to three grams per day which can be split to take 30 minutes before each meal. And in terms of quality, look for high purity chitosan supplements, which will state that they are a minimum of 85 to 90% deacetylated and make sure that the product is tested for heavy metals and contaminants. Fourth is chlorella. Chlorella is a type of freshwater algae that's famous for its ability to bind heavy metals. It can also latch onto some pesticides and other environmental toxins, partly because of its high chlorophyll content. As an algae, chlorella also has some nutrient and antioxidant content. It can be taken at any time of the day, but most people take it with meals, especially if you're eating something that could have toxins in it. For example, if you're eating fish and are worried about the mercury. Taking it with food can also keep side effects like stomach upset to a minimum. You should avoid it if you have a sensitivity to algae and people with autoimmune conditions like lupus should also be careful because chlorella can somewhat stimulate the immune system and might make your symptoms worse. A good starting dose is around one to five grams per day. And if your body handles it well, you can work your way up to 10 grams or even more, which you would spread out over several meals, of course. Since chlorella has such a high affinity to toxins, you need to make sure to buy it from a reputable brand that lab tests their end product. Otherwise, you can run the risk of getting contaminated chlorella. Most people also recommend using cracked cell wall chlorella because it has a strong cell wall that can prevent it from being broken down and absorbed by our digestive system. There's also something called micronized chlorella where the algae has been ground into very tiny particles, much smaller than in regular chlorella powder. This process is done to improve how easily your body can absorb it and then use the nutrients inside. And the small particle size even allows for some of the chlorella to be absorbed into the bloodstream, so it can act outside the gut. Okay, next we have activated charcoal. This is a fine black powder made from burning coconut shells, bamboo, or wood at high temperatures. Its surface area is massive due to its porous structure, which allows it to bind to all kinds of chemicals, bacterial toxins, viruses, mycotoxins, drug residue, and some heavy metals. It's especially helpful in acute poisoning and when multiple toxin types are suspected. The problem with activated charcoal is that it also binds to nutrients and other helpful things. So it must be strictly taken on an empty stomach at least an hour or two before and after your meals, supplements, or medication. It's often recommended to drink a lot of water to help move the charcoal along 
and to avoid constipation. So this goes for almost all binders. I also wouldn't take it for long periods of time because of the risk of chelating other things out of your body. So see it as an acute remedy instead of a long-term one. And like I said before, don't take activated charcoal with medications or supplements that you rely on because it can deactivate them or block their absorption. A normal dosage will have around 250 to 500 milligrams per pill and you shouldn't take more than let's say two to three grams total per day. For acute poisoning, higher doses will be used, but this will happen under medical supervision. As for quality tips, go with pharmaceutical grade activated charcoal, which will usually come from coconut shells because of its higher porosity. Great. The last binder I want to talk about are actually two binders, fulvic and humic acid. These are natural compounds that come from the breakdown of ancient plant material, basically super concentrated organic matter from soil. They're packed with molecules that can bind heavy metals, chemical residue, pesticides, and even some radioactive particles. Fulvic acid is very small at the molecular level, so it has been theorized to actually pass into your cells and help pull toxins out from inside. Humic acid, on the other hand, is bigger and mostly works in the gut, helping to grab onto toxins there and then carry them out safely. Both are best taken on an empty stomach or between meals because you want them to move through your system without competing with food or supplements. Some people take them first thing in the morning or before bed. You can mix them into water or use a ready-made fulvic humic blend and as you can imagine, it will taste very earthy. If you're taking medications that need very tight blood levels like thyroid meds or blood pressure meds, then you should space your intake at least two to three hours away from these medications because they can affect absorption. A typical starting dose is around 10 to 30 drops per day if you're using a liquid extract or 250 to 500 milligrams per day if it's a powder or capsule. You can split it into two smaller doses if you want a steadier detox effect. Always follow the instructions on the product because different brands will have different strengths. As for quality tips, again, go for products that are lab tested. And here we're especially interested in heavy metal contamination. Fulvic and humic acids can be contaminated with that if they're sourced from polluted areas. So make sure the brand is reputable and uses high quality raw materials. Awesome. As you can see, not all binders are the same and each targets different types of toxins and has its own ideal timing and dosing. Before I end this video, I want to leave you with a few notes. First of all, none of this is medical advice, obviously, so be careful with binders and have them cleared with your doctor, for example, if you're already taking medication. Also, binders aren't without controversy. Some practitioners swear by them, while others stay away from them completely. They're definitely optional and you don't have to take them. For example, my favorite binder is just fiber from all the vegetables that I eat, and I usually don't take an additional binder. If I had to recommend a specific one, it would probably be MCP because of its gentleness on your stomach and the gentleness on other nutrients that your body actually needs. But it is also very expensive and everyone's reaction to it will be different. So definitely feel free to experiment. Obviously, when you do this, always buy the highest quality supplement that you can afford. The supplement industry is pretty unregulated, so you as the consumer need to do your due diligence to not fall for bad actors.